So what you found is that by noticing the language, it makes you ask, is this serving me? What's happening? I am Coach Jay. I am here with Coach Katie and Coach Wendy and Coach Rebecca. And today we're going to talk about what happens if you feel like you are stuck. So you may have tried a bunch of different like fitness, nutrition programs, tried to improve your lives, improve your life in all kinds of different ways. And you might find that you're running up against the same thing over and over again. And Coach Rebecca recently took a certification that talked about kind of the way we talk to ourselves and how the language we use, we call kind of conflict language. And we thought it might be useful to talk through that today to kind of frame how the language you use can really impact how you perform or how you approach goal setting. So what is conflict language? Yes. So conflict language, so if we think of mindset as a story that you tell yourself uh, about you know who you are and how you approach things, then conflict language would be the constant use of words that kind of detract you from being your full... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Grabbing a beer. Um, <laughs> so there's three types of conflict language. There um, is soft talk. There is um, negations, like negative language. And then there is projections. And basically, these are three ways, um, three types of languages that get in your way uh, when trying to accomplish things, we'll just say. So can you, maybe it would be helpful yeah. to go through an example, like somebody that's, you know, come in, they've tried all these different things and they're struggling, they're in their, you know, first, whatever, two months of work, training with us. And give me an example of like somebody that's using soft talk and how that is sort of hurting them. So soft talk is what we hear the most. I'm trying not to use soft talk as I say this. So yeah. here are the words, probably, perhaps, feels like, guess, maybe, could, might, possibly, sort of, kind of, potentially, hopefully, try, one day, should, and almost like. Mm. So, so somebody, so we're, let's say we're meeting with somebody there in week four and they haven't, let's say, followed the nutrition program. Well, give me an example of them using soft talk. I'll, oh yeah, go ahead. I'll try to get back on track this week. Mm -hmm. mm, hear right. that one. Yeah, yeah. What else? What else do you hear? I could have done better. Mm -hmm. mm. Ooh. Yeah. 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 That I was, should be going to bed earlier. Yeah, that was interesting. I asked uh, one of your clients, are they eating enough protein today? And the, and the answer was yes. Or sorry, no, the question was, are you eating more protein today? And the answer was yes, but not enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I didn't ask you if you were eating enough. I asked you if you were eating more protein. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I don't know if that's soft talk, but that was just something I noticed today. It is though, right? Mm. It yeah, is. Well, so if you were to say, can you eat more protein, Wendy? Yes. Probably, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, probably. I think I can. Yeah. Mm. Sure, maybe. Mm. Yeah. Is yeah. sure is sure one of the words? Mm, we'll should be, maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it possibly. should be possibly one of the words. Well, so how often if, if one of your clients says, yeah, I think I could probably do that. Sure. Well, I said mm. sure there. Yeah. Suddenly I'm from yeah. North Dakota, sure. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Sure yeah. is one of those words that for me, when someone says sure, it's like, no, that's not yes. Sure is like, I'll do it because you're making me do it. But they don't actually want to do it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what that's the meaning that's when I say definitely. sure. <laughs> that's definitely yeah. funny. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, you think I don't pay attention Shots to language you use? Yeah. yeah. Sure, I'll do mm -hmm. it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think I could probably do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, probably. I say probably a lot. Like, I've mm -hmm. noticed the things that I mm -hmm. I say. You pay attention. Okay, so yeah. this is so this is soft talk, and we hear this a lot. What's, what's wrong with this? So... We use words, we use soft talk to, in, in different situations, but a, a lot of times it's to, to cushion how other people receive us. Mm. So rather than saying, like, I'm just going to use something off the top of my head, like, yeah. Katie, you need to eat more protein. Katie, I think you maybe should eat more protein. Mm. Because if she, you know, does, and for whatever reason it doesn't work, I can say, well, I think maybe. Yeah. So 
you know, I'm, I'm giving myself some distance between, you know, what I want to say. So it's, it's a way to, you know, not put yourself on the hook, mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Soften. Yeah. Yeah. Soften. That's okay. So that's what it is, is to soften the mm-hmm. blow of the request that you're making from of somebody else or soften, soften the commitment level. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. To soften the commitment level. Yeah. 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 Going into nutrition. Like, I don't, this is kind of scary. This is yeah. kind of scary. Yeah. Yeah. This is scary. Yeah. 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 I don't really want to commit. I'm not a hundred percent sure. So yeah, I think I probably can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It gives you an out. That's interesting. So, yeah. so, so then when you hear that soft talk as a coach, what do you do? Well, acknowledge I mean, I'm not going to call people out. I mean, when we first put up the sheet, I was, I sort of did it. I was like, boop, yeah. boop, boop. And that's one way as coaches, we can bring the awareness to our clients is give them the sheet and just let them become aware of it. You know, it's not to call people out or to make them feel bad, but you know, just if, just say like, I should eat more protein. Like, how does that make you feel? You listening? Say it. I should eat more protein. Like, how does that make you feel? Hungry. Of course, Wendy feels hungry. <laughs> but it's some. It's a chore. Yeah. I should yeah. eat more protein. Yeah. I have yeah. to. Yeah. But so you know, now I'm in a space where I can you know start to translate that. Yeah. Should you eat more protein? How about I need to eat more protein? I need to. Okay. Now I'm observing it. Like, okay, it is something I need to do. I have a choice whether I want to do it now. It's interesting you use the word need. Because that's one of those words for me that is just like, when you say you need to do something, what mm. happens if you don't? Like, I'm, I'm sort of feeling like, well, now it's like a to do. Yeah. It's like your need to, should do, <laughs> you know, have tos are the things that feel like traps. Well, and that's that's great to acknowledge that, self, that about yourself as well, because people are going to respond to words differently too. Mm-hmm. And so if need is something that kind of, makes you feel kind of worked up about it, then yeah. that might not be the way to go. Right. So saying I get to eat more protein. Or I want to. Or mm-hmm. I need yeah. to eat more protein because. Yeah. What is the because? Right. Mm. Because I have to. I choose to. Because I choose to. Yeah. So, you know, the goal isn't to shame people for using soft talk, but it's to help direct your reasons for doing things. And help you be confident with your choices. Yeah. So if you're listening to this and you notice that you're using these words, what do you do about it? Soft talk acknowledged. I, now I, I, I change. Yeah. Yeah. We hear you say it all the time. Like, Oh, there it was. Yeah. So, you know, I recently just, I had a call, um, on the certification I'm taking the next level and you know, there's, I think 20 of us now in this, and as we talk, we'll acknowledge our own, and we'll change it as we go. Mm. So yeah. the big one is I think. As you're talking through, you'll say, I think, and then I don't think. Like, I know this. I mean, yeah. I'm talking about how I'm feeling. Like, I think I feel sad. I'm not. I feel sad. Yeah. Like, why can't I just say I feel sad? Mm. Yeah. So just acknowledging it. Mm. And, and what are the benefits of acknowledging that? Like, for somebody that's... You know, again, they've tried everything and they keep running against the same thing. What happens when they start acknowledging that? What's been your experience anyway? So I have more. So we call it archetype language. Um, so or archi- architect, not archetype, architect mm. language. So it's building our mindset mm-hmm. now. Um, so it allows me to reflect on is what I'm doing serving what I want. Mm-hmm. And this kind of goes into sort of the other conflict language. I mean, projections are the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and just reflect like, do I need to eat protein? Mm. Am I doing this for myself? You know, when I say should, am I projecting somebody else's goals or, um, you know, what they want onto myself? So what you found is that by noticing the language, it makes you ask, is this serving me? Yeah. I hear it in, um, it's so interesting. Even just that example of, I think I feel sad. And just thinking about that in my mind, I think I feel sad versus saying I feel sad is suddenly now I feel sad is so much more vulnerable if I'm sharing that with yeah. myself or with somebody else. But it's also more honest. Yeah. And one thing that I notice, especially working with people who struggle with emotional eating, is oftentimes the discomfort is around 
actually feeling whatever it is that you're feeling and realizing that it's not going to kill you. Mm -hmm. And so it's that like I'm constantly hedging how I feel because I don't want to expose myself to the depth of that pain or like the rawness or the honesty of that pain. Yeah. And it's like, um, yeah, anyway, that's just interesting. Comes up all the time. Yeah, this is one of the things um, when I was training is one of the many times I've trained coaches. One of the things that makes you a great coach is the like shortening the time between shortening the gap between what you think and what comes out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just like or what you feel and what comes out of your mouth. It's like if you can just be raw and honest about like, I feel like you are not being truthful with me or I feel like you're actually saying this versus trying to talk around it to make a client feel better, the, the more honest that you can get, the more, like, the more honest your clients will be mm-hmm. because then you can say, okay, this is what I feel. And they can say, no, no, that's, that's not it at all. Okay, great. Tell me what you feel, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Or they can say, oh, that's right. You know, that's how I feel. Yeah. And right? as you say all this, even on the floor as coaches, we, we do this. I catch myself doing it yeah. when I'm co- coaching like Olympic lifting. I think that looked better or yeah, you probably could have pulled, like, could I have, should I have pulled earlier or, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So yeah. even as coaches, we, yeah. you know, don't want to hurt their feelings. Like that was kind of Not good. Me. What's this kind <laughs> of good? Yeah. <laughs> Not Jane. Mm-hmm. Or Mike either. Mike's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hurt their feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was kind of parallel. Was it kind of parallel or was it parallel? And so mm-hmm. just recognizing even as a coach, like, you know, the client isn't going to be like, dude, what, what do you mean you think? They're going to be like, uh-huh, okay. But they're probably leaving confused. Like, okay, <laughs> did I did I do it? Yeah. You know who else doesn't care about hurting people's feelings? <laughs> Wendy. <laughs> I can see the look on your face right now. You're just like, I don't know what words are coming out of your mouth. I just say things. I've heard her and soft people talk do before. Things. I have. They're, yeah. You know what's funny about you, Wendy, is that what? you either are all hard talk <laughs> or mm. all soft talk. Yeah. There's no in between. No, there isn't. There well, isn't. What would in between look like? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think everybody's on the spectrum of. Yeah, it's I, it's funny though with Wendy. I feel like there's people that like she's just really like light touch with, and then people she's just like I don't mm. care what you mm-hmm. think of me at all. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I was gonna say I think <laughs> I stopped myself. I want to say it's because um, how I grew up, it was all just like discipline with my, especially with my dad. Um, he was in the type who would say, great work on getting a B or, or, you know, I know that you tried hard. It's like, no, you can get an A. Mm. There's, there's no such thing as a B. Yeah. Right. Even though I had like an F the previous score. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But B was never enough. Yeah. Right. So I didn't grew up hearing a lot of that when I was growing up and even sports, like, let's say we won a game and it's not that he's like a bad dad or anything like that, but he's just, that's how he was raised to as well. Mm. Um, my mom was a whole different story. She was like, don't listen to your dad. He didn't mean that. You did great. Mm-hmm. So they were opposites, right? Mm-hmm. So but I know. actually did better with school, sports, because of how my dad actually, I wouldn't say train me, but how he parent me. Yeah. Versus my sister and my brother, they responded better with how my mom right. reacted. So, And I still do it, right? That's how I get great coaching is by not you saying great job Wendy you do so well it's like you got to get in my face and say pick this shit up right <laughs> so it's and I can see some athletes react in the same way how I like to get coached or how I work better um but the soft coaching it's I want to say it's I don't do it very often yeah um it's like some cases where I think I said it again <laughs> Where I know that that's how that person needs that type of coaching. Yeah. Um, can you use, can you still be, I mean, you said you just using the word soft, mm-hmm. like separate from soft talk, but mm-hmm. can you still be um, less, I don't want to say in your face either, but you know, yeah. empathetic is hard too. I'm trying to think yeah. of the right word, yeah. but without, you know, it's still without using 
soft talk. Like, would I react? You didn't. Well, like you didn't go low enough, Wendy. I'm not saying you didn't go low enough. You suck. Yeah. Get your ass lower. Yeah. But like, hey, I know you've been working really hard. <laughs> yeah. You're still not going low enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you see my face? I, no, I yeah. know. Well, so, I mean, that's more of a coaching style. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, and I'm using soft talk more in the, like, sense of, you know, we're not mincing words here. Right, Like, right. you probably could have gone lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Regardless yeah, right. of how you say it, it's still right. like, so, so right. should I have gone right. lower? Or, right, like, yeah, yeah. That is probably... Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I, I do think there's, like, a... Yeah, I, I think this is great. This is actually a great example. Like, you know, someone not going low enough on the squat, mm -hmm. right? It's just like, you could say, you know, you, I, it's uh. funny, I'm thinking of you. <laughs> I could see Rebecca going like this, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And going, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and, and like, if it's the person's first month at the gym, that's like appropriate. You don't maybe right. have the relationship and you're kind of like, you know, you want to encourage them because really, like, in the end, they will get low enough once they have enough practice or whatever. But if they've been here for seven years yeah, and they're not going low enough on the squat. Yeah. Then you say, dude, you need to go lower. It's just kind of, yeah, it's not even that. It's just all the way down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it just yeah. like, it doesn't have to be like, hey, you suck. Right. right. Unless they just ignore you. You say, yeah. you know, all the way down. No, they didn't do it. Okay. Yeah. That's a no rep. Yeah, That's yeah, another yeah. no rep. That's yeah. another no rep. I've had to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's like... um you know, your approach is just much more direct because you have a much longer relationship, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And they, there's a little more like, um, you have a little more equity in the relationship so you can pull a little bit of it out and not mince words. Mm -hmm. does, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's part of the, the thing with small talk is people, it's like they, like you said, they're not comfortable being vulnerable mm -hmm. because they're not sure what they're going to get from you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And so if they share this with you, are you going to say, oh, you suck? Yeah. You should, you know, you got to be eating more right, protein right. or else don't come in the gym. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. All right. So that that's soft talk. What was the second one? Second one are negations. So that's like can't, won't, um, don't. I mean, anything with not attached to it. Yeah. Um, the, the, you know, the reason it's a huge thing is we talk about the reticular activating system. So that's. Like if I say, if I have a white car and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. all I see are white cars, like yep. that's your reticular activating system drawing attention mm -hmm. to whatever the thing is. Yep. So if I say, you know, don't do this, even if I told you what to do before, you're suddenly thinking about all the things that you, yeah. you, you shouldn't be doing. Like that's your focus. Yeah. So if I say, you know, don't eat carbs, I don't know. Yeah. Suddenly you're just thinking about donuts and right. pizza and all the things. All you really hear is eat carbs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right? You don't hear the don't part. Yeah. So it's like, don't think of a pink elephant. All you can do is think of a pink elephant. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So in terms of like mindset stuff, like I can't do a muscle up, for example. Yeah. I would translate that into I can work on a muscle up because yeah. I want to do it, you know, one day. And yeah. then I would even get so far as to say the day that I'm doing it. And then I can actually, I can action plan yeah. for that. So, but if I keep telling myself every day, I can't do a muscle up, that becomes my identity. Mm -hmm. I'm the person who just can't do a muscle up. Okay. This is good. All right. So negations really is like, is like basically you saying something like I'm uncoordinated. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or I'm not strong. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I always, I always suck at the overhead squat yeah. or whatever. And what you're going to do is you're just going to start thinking of all the times you couldn't do it. Yeah. Like, I'm just start to think, if I say I can't do a muscle up, I'm thinking about yesterday where, like, I just couldn't do a muscle up. Yeah. So, yeah. So if you tell the story, like, I am not a runner. Yeah. Yeah. Then all I'm thinking about are all the I, times I got really tired running. Yeah. I hate cooking. Food prep yeah. is so hard. Yeah. I can't measure my food. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, you know, tr tracking is so hard. I can't lose weight. This mm -hmm. this is stuff we yeah, hear I'm all the time. Yeah. yeah, I'm inconsistent. And then your yeah. mind goes to all the stories that present evidence to that mm -hmm. fact. Yeah, yeah. And so it just is this this cycle of I am now that person who can't do this. Yeah, what you're saying is, what you put your attention on is what's going to be true. Yes. Right. So if you were to say, uh, I'm a great cook, mm -hmm. right? Then 
you you're that's what's going to be true for you right yeah. or like this food tracking is so easy right mm -hmm. or you know wow my muscle ups are really improving yeah or if i say you know i can i mean i have done two muscle ups or three yeah. muscle ups in my yeah. life so i clearly can do it so i yeah. can't even say i can't do a muscle up yeah um but just because i haven't for a while now i'm telling myself that but if i say i can work towards getting a muscle up so by you know i don't know September, yeah. I can do one in a row. Now I'm starting to think of all the work I've been putting into it. Yeah. And I'm starting to think mm -hmm. of all the like hours I've spent, the freaking mm. ribs yeah, I was on noticing my, that. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. and so I'm now thinking of the evidence to show that I can do that thing. Yeah. Yeah. I have so much to say about this one. Um, so the thing that I hear most often when I talk to people about these negations, I never heard it called this, but mm -hmm. this is like, you know, one, we used to make people do burpees for saying I can't do stuff. Because mm -hmm. it's like, I don't want to hear that shit. I've seen people do things that they thought they couldn't do right after they said they couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So if you sit here and say you can't do something, and I've seen it a hundred times from mm -hmm. people just like you, I'm not going to believe you, so I don't want to hear it, mm -hmm. right? But the biggest feedback that I get from that is, well, I'm just being real, right? I'm just being, <laughs> I'm just being, you know, I, I'm like, I'm like, you know, my foot, my feet are on the ground. I'm in reality. I'm not in this dream world of that. Everyone can do muscle ups. Right. And so like, how do you, how do you kind of deal with that? Or how do you suggest people deal with that? So you're saying, so going back to muscle ups, if someone's like, I can't do a muscle up. Yeah. I mean, at some point there's some truth to it. Do you want to do? I mean, my, my question then would be, do you want to do muscle ups? Yeah. So, okay, so <laughs> I guess as a coach, I'm thinking through this is just like, I think when people have these like opinions of themselves or they have these negations, they see it as reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They see it as this is their reality, yeah. right? And when I say, actually, I think you can do more than this, they struggle to see that reality. So they focus on their current reality. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some of this takes talking through right like yeah. so i mean i can say i'm i can't fly a plane i mean that's obviously it's true i can't fly a plane have you tried well that's <laughs> the thing do you want to do i yeah. want to fly a plane yeah no and i'm per perfectly okay <laughs> never <laughs> flying <laughs> kind of like that. being near planes uh, yeah. <laughs> so so that's fine and i mean but i'm not going around thinking all day i can't i can't fly a plane <laughs> it's not like weighing me down and like harming me i don't yeah. you know wake up in the morning and picture myself like outside of a plane like you know this <laughs> but, but if it's something i want to do like a muscle up for example like if i say i can't do a muscle up like i have done a muscle up so that's not a true statement i yeah. can do a muscle up yeah. the evidence i have I can't do a muscle up right now. Okay. I can work on a muscle up. Like, so you can just, you know, start taking actionable items on the things. Like, do you want to do a muscle up? So the, the people who are like, I'm just, you know, being real or whatever. I mean, there's something else there. That's when I would say there's, there's something else that's yeah. stuck. There's probably like a moment in time where maybe something didn't go right, they failed, you know, something yeah. is causing them to think that they're just not capable of it. Yeah. And that might need more digging. Yeah. And it's probably, it's probably, it's not going to get solved on the floor yeah. moments before yeah, you tell yeah. them to do burpees. I mean, it, you're essentially talking about the difference between a pessimist and an optimist, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is tough. <laughs> I mean, if you've yeah. been a pessimist your whole life, then, you know, being, it, it's tough to flip that switch. Yeah. To, to like now, now instead of saying I can't do this, I'm gonna say, oh, I'm on my way to doing this or whatever it is. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think too. Part of this is like there is there is value here in recognizing that there are multiple things that can be true. Mm. Like it's true that Rebecca can't do a muscle up today or yesterday, yeah. whatever, right? And it's true that she is continuously working on them. Mm -hmm. And I think like what I'll often say to people is like, let's just, let's try another story. Let's try another one on. You're telling me you can't come to the gym three days a week. Um, all right. Like maybe you didn't last week. Great. But like, let's try another story on. Not that you have to choose that one, but it's like, there are, there's this like, I'm, I'm uncoordinated story. And it's like, all right, sure. But like, let's try another one on. Well, I can work on my coordination. I've done that X, Y, and Z times. Awesome. 
like it's not always about I would say to the person who's like, I'm just a realist. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just giving you what's real. It's like there's actually multiple realities. Mm. So let's see what all those realities are. And now you get to choose. Mm. And I would suggest trying to choose one that's going to get you to take that next step. Yeah. And if you feel like the I will never do a burpee reality is the one that's going to get you to try a burpee, then choose that one. But I'm mm. guessing it's not going to do that. Yeah. yeah. But the one that's like, I can't do one yet or I can do an up down. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Like that to me feels a lot more like I'm going to try one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a question for you, Wendy, because we were just working on muscle ups earlier today. Yeah. We're working on getting a strict bar muscle up, which mm -hmm. you've done once. Yes. Right. And we, I was working on it and you were like, you came over and you started doing it and you got real close to just getting another one today. Yeah. Did, did you have any story in your head before you tried that today? Like, I, I can't do this or I'm going to give the, like, what did you, what, what did you say to yourself? I, well, this was the first time I tried this week. Yeah. So I usually just go for one attempt per week. Mm. Um, and last week didn't feel so great. And there's actually a story behind that too. I felt cause I was a bit heavier <laughs> last <laughs> week too. So then I was like, well, I'm a less, less heavy today. So let me see how it feels. But, um, I actually don't come in with any. Um, expectations mm. with with my attempts it's like whatever I learned from the previous attempt I just take it in and so like okay like you know you, you mentioned earlier saying you need to you're you're trying to transition faster you yeah. have to pull lower and before you do that so it's the timing for me right yeah. so it's just I take like the feedback from the previous one and just try to apply that for my next attempt yeah but do I think I'm gonna get one today no I don't because yeah. I have done that in the past and all I get is fail like failing failing right. after like every attempt yeah so you know i'm just so i'm just trying to get closer to one yeah mm -hmm. that's so that's the goal so you're just making an attempt yes and and the attempt is the win yes that's mm -hmm. the win if yeah. i get closer or i'm like you know less closer than last than previous time that's fine but yeah. i'm just going for the attempt yeah so there's really not a whole lot of language that no. goes into this it's just yeah. like i'm doing this and yep. we'll see what's going to happen yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah 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 that's how you can learn how to fly a plane <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, where are you going, Minneapolis? All right, I'm gonna pilot this. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna take crashing as feedback. Sorry. <laughs> Stakes are a little higher there. <laughs> attempts. <laughs> yeah. right, I got one attempt. <laughs> That's well, you know, sometimes I feel like that works, right? And this is what's working with me right now, because like this, especially like this year, coming back and feeling back to my you know, old numbers before getting, getting pregnant. It's like when I started to get back into my fitness, I had this like in my head, oh, I'm, I, that's the goal for me to get back to, you know, mm. the clean and be fast and all these things. And it's like, no, this is like reality. No, you can't. You just had a baby. Like what the mm. fuck are you doing? Mm. Right. So it's more like, okay, let me just move. Right. So it's just, I think just feeling successful after that thing is what helps me to get that thing. Mm -hmm. So just finding what that success is. Yeah. yeah. So every day is like a discovery of where you're at. Yeah, yeah. basically. And yeah. that's where I'm at right now. And I've tried multiple ways, I mean, in the past on how to approach, you know, my, my, my goals and just everything in life. And for now, this is what's working. Yeah. 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 That's actually really similar to how I approach it as well. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, you have injuries, you know, you have times where you're more focused, less focused. And for me, it's like, well, let's see what I can do today. Yeah. Oh, wow. I was able to like keep up with Wendy on a workout. Okay, yeah. Great. Maybe yeah. I'll try to push it a little more tomorrow. Oh, I pushed it and I got destroyed. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, let's see how it goes on Friday. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's just like, you know, you, you just see where you're at. Mm -hmm. And it's actually much more for me, much less stressful because I don't think about like oh, what yeah. it should be. Right. I mean, this is a great trans transition to the third types of conflict language, which is projections yeah. versus reflecting. Because what you guys are doing, you're doing a great job of reflecting, and mm -hmm. it's making your just path in the gym that much more fulfilling mm -hmm. because you're able to make it about yourself, right? right? It's like what you want that day. You're yeah. not thinking like, well, I should be doing this already. Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. um, you know, Kitty's working on, hard on getting me, giving me training, you know, I should be doing a muscle up already or, you know, they're all doing it Yeah. or Jay ran fast. Why, why can't I? 
And so using, you know, other people's goals or other people's expectations yeah. as your reasons for doing something. And I would say that's that well, not probably that is the number one kind of thing that impacts people's um, mindset mm -hmm. using other people's expectations as the reason to get them. I mean, how people have come to the gym when talking through goals and they're like, my family tells me I should lose weight oh, yeah. or like even the doctor tells me to lose yeah. weight. Yeah. Right? And how successful are those people who never like, who just are doing it for other people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. It might be a good reason to start. Yeah. Right. But you have to find a reason that is more intrinsically mm -hmm. motivated. Yeah. Uh, if you want, if you're going to continue for yeah. the long term. Yeah. Right? And it's it's a hard battle. That's that's a hard translation to do. I mean, and it happens on not just with goal setting, but you know, I should have gone faster in that workout because I'm as fit as Wendy or something. You know, yeah. like her and I are the same level of lifting. Like, what's wrong with me? Yeah. But you know, taking Wendy out of the equation, mm -hmm. you know, what is wrong with me? Nothing's wrong with me. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I am tired. And then you start yeah. like reflecting on your how you're feeling and yeah. getting to that. And you yeah. can do that really fast. You don't even have mm -hmm. projections now. It sounds like mm -hmm. uh, in terms of fitness, and I'm sure they're there in other aspects right. of it. Like mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to as a mom not you know project mm -hmm. like they're doing that. I, you know, it's funny you say that. I think what happens is you get your ass kicked so many times, like trying to compare yourself to other people, and they you know, like they'll beat you and then somebody else, and then maybe you catch up to them and then somebody else beats you. Right. Somebody that started after you is now making progress faster than you. And when you get your butt kicked that many times, you start to realize like, it's actually not about them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. more about you and what you want. Yeah. And you start to find out like, oh, actually they've been putting extra work in or they've been more, new, more focused on their nutrition those or they've all done all those things, right? Yeah. And it's just like, well, I don't live their life. <laughs> yeah. I live my life. So if I want something, then I have to look at what I am doing and what I'm willing to give up. And if I'm not willing to give up what they gave up, then why am I comparing myself to them? And I think part of that is just experience. Like you do this kind of training enough and you come in thinking, I'm going to, I'm going to beat Katie today. And you finish in twice the time that she finishes. You're kind of like, oh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't compare myself to her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't. I'm not, I don't think not everybody gets to that position though. Even, yeah. even people have been doing this for a long time. I mean, that's why there's, you know, mindset, com competitive mindset coaches for athletes yeah. and stuff. Like, you know, just because you've been doing this for a long time and even if you get beaten, I mean, it weighs on people. Yeah. Um, so it's great that you guys are where you're at. I mean, I've, I like to think that I'm there as well, but you know, it's, it, for some, it'll take more than just, you know, reps, reps of like being at the gym all the time. It's that awareness of like, you know, it, it has to be self-driven. It has to be, come from me. Mm -hmm. so, so what would you do if like, let's say, and I'm not talking for you in particular, but if there's a time where you're comparing yourself to someone right at the gym and like the score is getting to you and... Um, you, you see their, their workout or their time on like the board or on the sugar wad, what sort of things would you do in order to get back to what you want, mm -hmm. like action steps in order for you to st like stay away from that mindset? Yeah. Write it down. I write down the, th the thoughts okay. that I'm having. Um, I mean, if it's big, if it's something that like, you know, if I'm just fuming and yeah. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I'm really upset. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I write it down and I don't write it down just so it's on paper. I then correct it. I yeah. mean, mm -hmm. I translate it into yeah. what I'm really saying. So, yeah. um, I'm just trying to think off the top of my, there, they, they, okay. Like, let's say it's a lifting workout and mm -hmm. I don't lift what I think mm -hmm. I should have lifted. Mm -hmm. So if I'm being honest with myself, my thought is like, oh, they are going to judge me and think I'm weak. Mm. Right. Like, that's the root feeling. I yeah. could tell myself that, like, I should have done better. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I know that I was tired or I know that I didn't get any sleep last night. Yeah. My, the fear around it really is, like, they, I will now get judged and I'm no longer going to be, you know, considered a strong person. I see. So they're going to 
you know, judge me or mm. for lifting. Yeah. I have a score sheet. Yeah, <laughs> no, I know. Jane's going to add it to his book. And then I look at it and then I'm like, okay, is that true? No. So I'll take out they. I'm going to judge me. Mm-hmm. Well, am I going to judge me? Do I care that I didn't do this lift? I know yeah. how I feel. Okay, that's not true. And then I'll, and I'll translate it. I'm, I know how I felt going into this lift. Be, or I, I didn't do well because I didn't get enough sleep. And then slowly I'll just start you know, getting to the root thing of where I'm at. I was tired today. Mm-hmm. I am tired today because I didn't get enough sleep. Mm-hmm. I didn't let, lift as well as I could. Yeah. I have lifted that weight in the past. I am capable of it. Yeah. So it's reminding myself that I can do it, and today is not. Yeah, like that know. one workout doesn't really determine like your yeah. overall fitness. And, that. You know, and I'm not saying like every time something goes right. wrong, I have to do this, but that's eventually you get that in your head, right. that kind of breakdown. Mm-hmm. And you know, when, when we had the open workout, when I didn't do the thruster as, as much as I thought I should have, mm-hmm. I kind of had that mental thought process run through my head as I went through a walk because it goes down from like when you're not used to doing this writing it down and translating it to eventually you can just kind of do it Mm -hmm. so on the walk I had pretty much those exact thoughts and then I got back and I'm like who cares like (laughs) there's gonna be other workouts whatever yeah but that initial like fear that oh man people are gonna think I'm weak and by the time I got to the 500 meter turnaround I'm like that's stupid Mm -hmm. who cares Mm -hmm. so you know it's to Jay's point, it takes a lot of reps. It takes practice. It's not something that, you know, I'm not going to be naive and say, you know, flip it around. It's not about other people. Yeah. Um, but mm-hmm. if it's something that is important to you, like if you find yourself stuck all the time and kind of going in circles around why am I not losing weight? Why am I, what is wrong with me? Why mm-hmm. am I not getting better? Mm-hmm. There could be something in there that's stuck that you need help just translating to, you know, make it more um, architect language. Yeah, mm-hmm. there, it's, it's almost like there's a couple things you said in there that are great. Like, number one, is that true? Yeah. Right, that's one of my favorite questions. Mm-hmm. It's just like people are saying, well, I'm not, you know, I'm doing all the things and I'm not losing weight. It's like, great, is that true? Mm-hmm. Right, is it true that you're doing all the things? Is it true that you're not losing weight? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's look at the numbers, yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, actually, you know, your weight went down one or two pounds, but you lost like 5% body fat. So actually, you're kind of doing the thing, mm-hmm. right? Or did you think you needed to lose more? Okay, if the answer is yes, great. Mm-hmm. Is it true that you're doing all of the things? Let's take a look at your logs. Mm-hmm. Oh, I forgot to log these three days. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. So you actually didn't do the thing that it was required to get the result. So... You can make yourself feel bad about it, or you can choose to do the thing, mm-hmm. right? And that's kind of that's kind of what you're saying is it's like, you know, did I rest properly for this workout that I had to do today? Did I taper down so that I wasn't tired and I could get the best thruster that I needed to get on this mm-hmm. day? Well, yeah. you didn't know you were doing a thruster that day, but yeah. whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? But it's just like if the answer is no or kind of or sort of, it's like great, like then don't make it mean anything, yeah. yeah. You know, and if you want to reach your full potential, do all of the things that you know you need to do to get to your full potential. Yeah, and what's really nice about it is it gives you ownership of, um, well, one, how you're feeling, what you're going to do, and then it also allows you to think, is it that big of a deal? Like, right? Like I want, let's just say the muscle up. I can get a muscle up if I just am like every single day this is all I'm going to do yeah I'm just going to work on it I have no doubt that I will get there do I want to absolutely not I actually hate doing muscle up stuff I just does not bring joy so the balance that I have is great but I had to get Mm, past well (laughs) I had to get past (laughs) this idea that like you know people care if i can do a muscle up like if i'm doing it for other people like oh, everyone yeah. thinks i should be I have the score an athlete right yeah well, jay, <laughs> other than jay you know then that's like oh, i gotta do it for other people but if i'm doing this for myself it's like cool i can also you know not do it today and i'm okay with it mm-hmm. yeah yeah i and that's that's this is really interesting you mentioned that there's been gymnastic skills where i'm just like i am not able to do this thing and i am not willing to live another day yeah. without doing this thing. So I literally did work every single day yeah. until I got the mm-hmm. thing. And it was like, great. And then I did it. And then what ends up happening is, okay, great. Now I know I can show up every day, do some work and achieve something. And so now my idea of like how I'm, 
who I am or what I'm supposed to feel if I can't do something is just completely different. Yeah. It's like, well, did I show up every day to do that handstand walk? No. So why am I upset about the fact that I am not able to do it? Right. Right. And it's like, great. If I want to do it, I'm going to show up every day. And like right now working on strict bar muscle ups, I'm showing up every day and doing it. And now Wendy's trying to show <laughs> off in front of me doing it right in front of me. It's <laughs> trying but, to motivate you. Yeah. Okay. Well, and <laughs> Here's the great thing about that story about showing up every day and doing it and accomplishing it. And I think of the running, for example, like yeah. I'm going to run and I did it and I'm proud of myself. And yeah. You know, I can have that affirmation now of like, I am dedicated and now I have a story to show evidence that I can do something. And yeah. so turning these like stories of, you know, I can't do a muscle up, here's all the stories, but actually I am capable of doing things. This is what I've done. And then reminding yourself. And I think that's the gap with a lot of athletes, a lot of clients, a lot of people in general is they fail to look at the evidence for the positive things yeah. that they can do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are they like identify with certain things that they can do or um, versus like qualities that they have. Mm -hmm. So like in your example, I can't do a strict bar muscle up and that becomes part of your identity versus like I'm somebody who shows up every day for the things that I care about. Yes. I'm yep. consistent yeah. or I'm reliable or I'm adaptable yes. or I'm capable, right? Which are so much more flexible. Yeah. Right, then we can apply, because I, I see it all the time in people who are like, they give 100% at work. And when it comes to taking time for themselves, they have this story that they can't do it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, actually, you can. You've demonstrated over and over in your life that when you commit to something and something is important to you, you can show up 100% for it. Yeah. Right? So we can use that quality. That quality is part of your identity, is part of your character. Now we can apply it to this other thing is a goal of yours if you view it as important. Yeah. 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 And that's part of our job as coaches is to find out what is most important. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then give you a plan that you can show up and crush every right. day or three days a week or whatever it is <clears throat> yeah. so that you can get there as quickly as possible yeah. with that same And dedication. I think like, and that's so important to emphasize because I see it over and over again with clients is because they come here with a fitness or nutrition goal that they believe that we view that as their most important goal. Mm. But that's actually not our job. Our job is to help them clarify what is their most important goal and support that. Yeah. And so people are really apologetic when they didn't mm -hmm. track every day. Yeah. And it's kind of worth digging into. Did you not track every day because that wasn't the most important thing to you? Yeah. Do you want it to be the most important thing to you? And if the answer is no, then okay, that's yeah. great. Then like I'm here to support what is most important to yeah. you and look at then what is kind of the, what are the bare minimums that would help you feel successful around fitness and nutrition? But my job isn't to tell you that this is the most important thing you do. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. great. I think that's a great way to end it unless you have anything else to add. No. Right. So mm -hmm. um, work on your mindset. And if you just want to be told what to do, Oh, <laughs> Suck it up. <laughs> Hard talk only. All right. We will see y'all next time. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Bye. 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 Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, we've got plenty of others. Go check out this one over here.